Hello YouTube, Jumpy23 here, back with my FE8 0% LTC, and today we'll be covering Chapter 6. So the first thing that we're going to do is sell all of Naomi's weapons to fund another shopping trip. You may remember that I said she contributes in exactly one map, and she hasn't done that yet. Don't worry, I didn't forget. Chapter 6 is the first Fog of War map. What this means for a casual player is that you can't see all of the enemy placements and movements. What this means for an LTCer is that you get oodles of free staff XP with Torch. So Mulder just bought two of those. Ross is going to get his really long awaited promotion to pirate now and I've talked about this for so long that I've almost certainly said all there is to say about Ross at this point. But I will be glad to see his ass on the bench. Chapter 6 is a kill boss map. Vanessa just barely has enough movement to drop Seth next to the boss on turn 2 to kill him on enemy phase. An enemy phase kill is actually superior for our purposes anyway because it lets Joshua get an extra enemy phase of XP and Armor Slayer use grinding. This comes at the cost of reliability, but this is GBA, so who the hell cares? Natasha takes her mend back and she's going to death grip that for the rest of the game. And Seth takes the secret book here because he does so much combat in the early game, I gave him this for reliability, but later maps made me wonder if I shouldn't have saved it for my late game carry instead. In particular, there's one boss who has exactly 10 luck to my carry's 10 crit. Secret books give 1 crit, so this really could have helped there. Seth also takes the Draco shield, and I have no regrets about that. Vanessa dumps her inventory to improve her avoid rate against fighters. She fights a couple of these here and no sword masters or no sword enemies. Um, because all we care about is her surviving and not her doing any damage, this is a good idea. She also takes our first pure water. Soon we're going to run out of those and I'll wish I had more. As you can see, I don't even bother actually using the torch to eliminate tiles for two reasons. One, I saw all the enemy placements on fireemblemwad.com, and two, I copied the strategy from Greatest Stick. So here's a fun little rescue chain with Natasha to get her in position so that she can mend Vanessa on turn two. We get to make use of Colm's good early game movement again, which is neat. Something that I never really got as a casual, and honestly still have trouble wrapping my head around, is leaving a unit in the saddlebags at the end of a turn, like Garcia does with Seth here. The downside is you start the next turn with one fewer unit, but the upside is that you get longer rescue chains and more interesting rescue chains because you get the give command instead of only having take. It's a fun thing and it always makes me feel big brained when it works. This rescue chain here is why Franz had to equip a sword in the prep menu. He's going to be in range of that fighter who's holding a halberd, so if he's holding a lance and the fighter hits him, like the fighter will have pretty good hit, but with a sword on a forest the fighter almost never hits. So here's why I need the give command in particular because Vanessa needs to move forward and then drop Seth at the end of her range. Joshua is going to do the rest of the armor slayer grinding right here, and he's going to grab a full level off of it. He's standing on a fort, but he faces so much combat from fairly accurate enemy types that he has a real chance of death. If 4 out of 5 hit, he's a goner. Vanessa will also die if she's attacked by both of the melee enemies, and Franz will die if he's hit by the halberd. On the bright side, Vanessa did take that pure water, which lets her survive this mage. And Seth, being the broken unit that he is, can easily and reliably one round the boss, and that clears chapter 6 in two turns. Thank you for watching. 